albatross around the egg. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back uh, to yet another episode of The Heart of Horror. With me, as ever, and I'm Bo, by the way. Uh, for those keeping score at home. Um, but with me is the the lovely, the irascible, the uh, the the adventurous Kate Pollock. Hi. How you doing, Bo? I'm great. Um, Good. It is, we are recording this on New Year's Day. We are. Happy New Year. Happy New Year <laughs> to you. Uh, it's, it's why I sound a little bit ropey. I, you know... It, it always in, interests me that, like, in the UK, it is traditional to say Happy New Year instead of, or not Happy New Year, but Happy Christmas instead of Merry Christmas, as I understand it. No, I think most people say Merry Christmas now. Happy Christmas is fine, but it doesn't, it's not as, I don't, it doesn't sit as naturally to me. Yeah, I always thought that Christmas. was strange. And also, like Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, like, why on earth would you, if you're going to say Happy Christmas, say Merry New Year? That's weird. No, I don't like that. Yeah. No, you know, look, a as a, uh, <laughs> a linguist at heart, the, yeah. these are the things that fascinate me. <laughs> like, I, I, I've yeah. spent literally a week um, obsessing over the idea of, of chiasmus, which is a, a literary and linguist technique of... Um, uh, like it, it's a weird form of parallelism. A, a good example of it is John Kennedy's "Ask not what your country can do for you; ask what you can do for your country." Your country? That's yeah. you're right. That's an example of chiasmus, and so that's what right. runs through my head when I'm just sitting in a chair, quiet. Yeah, it's funny. Like because last night we were all very. I went out with some friends, and we were all really drunk. And then there was one point. I can't even remember which part of the night this was, but we were just saying how English is just like the hardest language to learn. It's just such a fuck around. And it's, um, and it's just, and we just, <laughs> we just stood there for like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something, just naming all the words that like are stupid, you know, like you can have through, mm -hmm. but also cough and tough. Mm -hmm. and that is all o-u-g-h or like the same word meaning a million things like where 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 there 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 all of that kind of stuff and it's like how the fuck does anyone learn english it's like amazing we were just like stood there all drunken and burn up our or drunken minds about how english is like you know out with chinese and spanish like the most common language in the world it's just like how though how the fuck have so many people learned this dumb fuck wit language yeah well it's like um, a, we all felt very blessed that we had we didn't have to really learn it as a second language it was just you know well like uh <laughs> tear and tear spelled the same, the same way it looks uh, exactly the same and the only way you know which is which is depending on the sentence and how it's used yeah it's basically like the original the english language is the original if you know you know Right, right. Because <laughs> it's just, you either know or you don't. <laughs> yeah, I like I had to recently, you know, as, as you and some of the listeners know, I've been working on getting my license to teach English, mm. which is why I sit around thinking about things like chiasmus. Yeah, um, yeah, attracts, attracts. <laughs> right. But so I had to take a, a big test recently, which is, it's called the Praxis. And the Praxis oh. is like a content test. It, it basically is the test to determine if you know enough English to actually teach it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do a bunch of studying for it. And I went down this weird rabbit hole of... You, Bo? <laughs> right. Someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, there, there was a thing that happened in the Middle Ages called the Great Vowel Shift. Right. Where over the course of about 300 years, between like the 15th and 18th century, roughly, mm -hmm. that all this like old English spelling and that kind of thing and the way that people pronounce stuff shifted from the old English way to a fairly modern version of it. Mm. And it didn't happen for any particular reason. Like it, there wasn't, I mean, there were wars and stuff like that going on, but um, it was really just like the culture of of English speakers were like, you know what? This sounds stupid. We should pronounce this a different way. 
Yeah. And and so that the vowel that sounds kind of shortened yeah. and yeah. the way you pronounce them moved like higher up in your mouth mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And, and but it was like it, it's fascinating to me that just over 300 years, like like somebody, if you had been like a vampire or something and yeah. lived during that time that you started off in, say, the 1300s and by the time. 1750 comes around everybody is speaking the same language but it would be terribly difficult to understand because all yeah. of the pronunciation would have changed yeah 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 it's quite funny because you kind of see a similar kind of thing happening now thanks to the internet you know everyone has sort of like this it's not necessarily that we're changing the way that pre-existing words are said but like we're bringing in an entirely new wave of language and there are certain words that are now considered more archaic mm-hmm. um, and, you know, things are ch- sort of changing, um, you know, and, and I'll hear like people come out with some stuff and I'm like, the fuck does that mean? I have to go on Urban Dictionary and look it up, you know, because I'm really old. Mm-hmm. So um, although not old enough to not use Urban Dictionary, although I'll get fucking told that that's no longer cool anymore. And yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, and it's just like. And then also as well, like I have that weird thing of like, am I too old to say this? Like, <laughs> like turn around going, yeah, oh man, that slaps. And I just feel like a complete imposter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slaps is one. <laughs> no. I still have trouble with like, it, it's weird because when I was a kid saying something was sick was, was slang and that's come back yeah. around. But, uh, has it ever left? Well, but, but it's more popular now than I think it ever was. Sick. And so it's weird because I have to retrain myself that that's an okay thing to say because there was a period where it was totally acceptable and then it became a little bit passe. So that if you say. Like cool is kind of a bit passe. Right. But I can't say. How the fuck is cool passe? Right. That's the thing. Like cool will always be. It's the definition. It's literally its definition is to be cool. Yeah. And trendy and hip. (laughs) Yeah. I, yeah. It's kind of like that now. It's like trendy and hip. Like no one the fucking says that unless it's ironic. Right. So I I always have trouble saying that anything is hip. And I think I've always had that problem. I just feel like I just every time I hear hip, I just think of Patrick Bateman. <laughs> right. I, right. <laughs> I I think when when someone says that's hip, I always think of the Austin Powers thing of like daddy's cool, daddy's hip. Chuka, 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 oh. chuka. Like that's what <laughs> yeah. I think of. So it seems old to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to just talk about the. We're not. No, we are not. <laughs> um, that's the freebie from us to you guys. Happy New Year! <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year for more language talk. That <laughs> that that's going to be our new podcast. Talking good with Kate and Bo. Oh my God! Don't. <laughs> oh, that, I'm actually up for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh but yeah oh but uh a ps on the story though i had to take that praxis test which i did and i totally rocked it which was uh oh, great i i felt very good about it it was it, like so you should yeah yeah i mean it was it was definitely one of those things of like oh wow i i actually did better than i expected i was going to do on it and oh nice one right right i felt very good um so you know we'll see we'll see if i can get a job that's that step step three (laughs) of the plan is oh now i have to get a job yeah yeah exactly uh you will you'll know that it'll be fine yeah i if not you know i mean i've always wanted to live outdoors yeah i you know like i I can still afford a sleeping bag and i'll have my dog with me in one of those like cardboard signs Mm -hmm. you know that says we'll we'll teach english for food (laughs) <laughs> i'm sure it won't come to that i'm sure you'll be okay <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll uh, see. <laughs> but we are here to talk about our subject for uh this particular episode was one <laughs> that you brought to the table <laughs> yeah because we're so we're talking about the movie it's gonna get be out. inventing episodes it's gonna be a, a get it off your chest episode kind of all right so so there and we we just keep multiplying segments of the show so we've got do we have some Tinder as the night? Do we have some some? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Are we doing Ghosted as well? Oh, should we do some Ghosted? Yeah, I, okay, I think, cool. I'll tell you what. Let's start with Ghosted. All right, as nice. a little aperitif, and this is mm. I'll, uh, you set it up because I'll I'll screw it up. Uh, you were the one who brought this to my attention. And I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm gonna screw it up, but it's fine. I can do it. Um, so this 
this theme for this episode is dating sociopaths mm -hmm. for which we will be looking at the um not so discussed aspects of the movie get out from 2016 no 2017 sorry mm -hmm. um so i fucked up um so yeah so obviously this film is very well known it's mostly <clears throat> well known for its racial commentary and social commentary um but one thing that it's it's not really i don't feel is discussed so much in it in is the horrors should we say of of dating a sociopath um and how that can fuck you up in more ways than just getting chased off the front lawn with a shotgun right so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be good. But uh, yeah. but okay. the ghosted part of it. Oh, the ghosted pit. Oh shit. Yeah. So the ghosted bit uh, was just <laughs> it's just some stupid stupid shit that I found on the internet, um, where <laughs> um, basically we've got people who have been have who have claimed to date literal ghosts. Mm hmm um so we're going to look into those got a couple of examples all right well i'll tell you what let's do that first and then we'll we'll kind okay. of use that as a sandwich and then we'll do tinder is the, the and then we'll do tinder on the back end right yeah, um because cool. the the thing that i'm excited about with with the ghosted segment is the fact that it's not just hey i'm dating a ghost it's that it seems like the same relationship complications that happened with say a normal corporeal being also happened with ghosts yeah yeah <laughs> yeah apparently um you don't learn even after you die yeah um, well you would think if you're dating a ghost that you as the ghost dater not the ghost themselves but you're like oh i'm dating someone who probably knows what they want because they've seen what the other side is like and not mm. only would I get some good information about that, which seems handy, but also, you know, they're going to be fairly stable. Yeah. One would think. I mean, you would think. But what? Would so, but what? What does the article tell us? So the first one that I sent you: <laughs> uh, woman who married a ghost claims he ruined the honeymoon by making her pay for everything. <laughs> well, I mean. Ghost don't, don't, ghost don't oh, got no do money. you know, I bet he only deals in crypto. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I'm so happy with that. I just came back up with that on the spot. That wasn't even written down. Uh, but, you know, what, what did you expect? Yeah, I really, like, he's not, he can't even handle money. Literally cannot handle money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pin in his pin? right, like all of his, his accounts have been frozen um yeah. on account of being dead yeah that this is I. like you you should know what you're getting into with that like if we are going <laughs> on a honeymoon you gotta foot the bill because the ghost can't oh but but here's the 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 thing you're saving money on you're not buying an extra plane ticket no right right yeah exactly you can just roam the halls or the, roam the aisles yeah or just zap <laughs> there like i don't know how it works i'm not a ghost yet yeah yeah would he be able to zap her too uh no because i think you gotta be dead to just like teleport right. from place to place yeah but i mean you know money saved so they they would presumably well he wouldn't be able to go house on her bed i suppose but like but if she's having to buy one not two she doesn't have to buy clothes for him she doesn't, doesn't really have to worry about christmas or anything right like you're, you know when you go to dinner you're just buying one plate because ghosts don't eat yeah exactly i think i really think she's missing the big picture yeah here. like so, yes are you spending money sure but also you're spending half as much and also only on yourself which you know being a modern woman we don't need men to pay for us right right you know like i mean it's like so you're sat there and you're paying for yourself and you're bitching about it come on yeah Put yourself out, love. also who proposed i'm thinking huh <laughs> probably so and it's it's sort of like when you invite someone to dinner you don't invite someone to, to dinner and then ask them to pay for it you don't no shit <laughs> this is yeah no exactly right like if if you you know th this was something that uh came up recently because 
um, we went to dinner like at a really nice place and invited some friends to dinner and you know, it was a fairly expensive restaurant and it was like, Oh, we can't ask them to pay because what a jerk move to be like, Hey, come to dinner with us at this really nice restaurant. Oh, by the way, this is going to cost you a fortune. (laughs) You know, it's like, Oh, sorry. Did we not explain this? All right. So here's another thing. Here's another asshole move that people make all the time. People who do those destination weddings, where they're like, hey, we're oh, going to get yeah. married in Tahiti. And so go ahead and book your plane ticket. And you're like, oh, no, no, no. If you want no, me we'll to show up in Tahiti, you are buying the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This Absolutely. is unrelated to ghosts. I'm just talking about bad behavior now. <laughs> bad, uh, yeah, bad social um, faux pas. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree, though. I agree. I'm like, why am I forking out however many hundreds of pounds or whatever or more on on a flight to attend the wedding that you have decided you want and you have decided you want me to be there. I'll check the video. Cheers. I'll watch all the uh, stuff on Insta. All good. Yeah. I'll get yeah. the filter version oh, as well. Oh, am I supposed I'll to bring a gift lovely. to Tahiti too? Yeah. Oh, I suppose you want me to pay for my own hotel and everything. Right. Oh. Do you want me to pay for the wedding breakfast too? Do you need me to pay for my, my food while right. I'm there? Yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead and just put the dress <laughs> on my tab too. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah fucking jerks people i tell you what the the dead are coming out really well right honestly i'm I'm starting to think that being dead is where it's at yeah i mean you get everything paid for all the time so that's one thing yeah and also apparently it's great because no one who ever died came back and was like you know what this sucks (laughs) yeah but apparently except for this you know boyfriend apparently yeah. Who was like, hey, I, but I don't know. Here's the other thing, too. This is really pres- presumptuous. Like, if you're dead, that gives you the d- the biggest dating pool in history because you can date oh, literally yeah. anyone else who ever died. Anyone. Yeah, literally anyone. Like, that's way more than 9, 10 billion people. Yeah. Like, way more. It's at least 12 billion people. So. At least. Uh, yeah, I mean, you sh- you should be so lucky as to pay for somebody's. Yeah, he's chosen you out of however fucking many. Yeah, get off your high horse, love. Oh, put that tab. That's Stick very ahead. funny. Uh, all right, yeah. Th- so, uh, w- did they end up breaking up, or was it just like, hey? Oh, uh, that's are... literally. I have. That's all I have. It was one of those headline stories with nothing else remotely. Oh, that's it. a shame. I don't even know if the woman that they put on it is even the woman. <laughs> Right, it could just be stock image. It could be literally anyone. Um, This next one, though, that I sent you does look as though it is the actual girl. And she looks pretty normal as well. Like, she doesn't look like the type of person to claim this. Uh Woman who had sex with 50 ghosts is now engaged with a spirit. And then someone underneath is written, (laughs) she found her boo. (laughs) That's pretty good. It's pretty good. (laughs) I I, I really enjoyed that. I love a good pun, as we've you know can uh determined with you know my crypto joke what well, so what was the uh, i'm sorry what was the headline again it, it, <laughs> it, she had she had sex with 50 ghosts 50 ghosts yeah five oh and she's now engaged to a spirit i mean is Cause it cause one of the yeah. 50 one presumes i mean i would assume so it doesn't seem like she's like you know against sex before marriage so yeah, clearly not you know so she would she'd probably you know get a bone on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> all right, all right. So, all right, was it... bones. All right, a couple of questions that I uh, I would like to ask for the audience. At this point. <laughs> so, was it at the same time or was this over the course of years or Yeah, like... again, this is all the information that I have, but I would assume over time because <sighs> Because if it's just, just one ghostly like, gangbang. Yeah, there's just the active person everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm on fire today. You would just, yeah, you'd have to squeegee often. that place clean. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you'd have to. Can you imagine, like, the the cleansing after? You, you would have to bring in, like, a Tangina Barrett <laughs> to get all the, the ghost <laughs> jizz out of there. 
this house is clean. I was clean. just taking a drink of water there. <laughs> yeah, right. This house is clean. What was I'm uh, enjoying this one too much. What, oh man, what was the the movie with was it Will Forte? Um oh, no. the, that uh, that was the ghost. Oh crap. All right, keep, uh, cover for me for a second. Let me find this movie cuz it's going to drive me crazy if I I'm gonna cover you. okay, okay, with my <laughs> yeah, with <laughs> with my hungover brain. Um that apparently is only good for making bad sex ghost puns. <laughs> I mean, bad sex ghost <laughs> puns or the best sex ghost puns? I mean, I just, I feel like we should put it out there to our listeners. <laughs> yeah, fair I, enough. I'm in, very entertained, so, you know, that's all fine. Um, <clears throat> Extraordinary, yeah, I, by the way, is the name of the movie I was trying to think of. It's, uh, w- which had oh, a lot of ectoplasm it. in it. Terrific Did movie. It. What about Entity? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, but the Entity is kind mm. of the, the, um, you know, evil opposite of the 50 ghost gangbang. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, they, you can guarantee that he ain't picking up a tab. Well, of course not. I wonder if that's a thing of like, hey, I'm now dating one of these 50 ghosts that I threw down with. And, yeah. you know, the, the future, like the looking down the, the, the road of their relationship, you get to oh, by the way, he doesn't ever pay for anything <laughs> on account of him being dead. Like, you you just have to, you, you go into a relationship with a ghost with eyes wide open. Yeah. You know, know yeah. that that's coming. Maybe this is the same person and this is just like a part, this is like the part one and the part two. But yeah. Women who had sex with 50 ghosts now engaged to a spirit and then women who married a ghost claims you ruined the honeymoon by making her pay for everything. Yeah, all right. And it's also a little picky because it, that sounds like one of those things like when you start dating someone and yeah. it's like, oh, they pick their teeth all the time. And it's like, ah, <laughs> I can live with that. And then you've yeah, been like- <laughs> dating for like a year and a half and you're like, I swear to God, if you pick your teeth one more time, I'm going to just take a hammer and knock them all out. Yeah. I'll stop that. Pick up your eye. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like the, um, you know, in Friends, when Chandler, there's that episode where Chandler just breaks up with women over the stupidest fucking thing. Yeah. 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 You know. But yeah. Right, like, like, like yes, it, the ghost is not picking up the tab, but you knew that. You, this yeah. is just you. Yeah, I, mean, I imagine that that is how it's been the whole time. But now you've bagged and tagged. <laughs> like, that was bagged an accident. That was an accident. Why? It's so pretty good. <laughs> it was good, isn't it? Um, and now you've bagged and tagged. <laughs> um, you now it's annoying, you know, because that novelty is over. Like, you don't have to try anymore. Uh huh. So, like... Oh, uh, that's cool. I've been paying. Yeah, I've been paying for everything. Right, you're mine now. You fucking you pick it up, please. Right, thank you. Right, and they're like, oh, yeah. I can't. <laughs> I don't have pockets. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to a girl's world. Shabang. Oh yeah, girls that's true. Pockets. Yeah, yeah. It's all fun and games until it's on the other foot. Speaking of, there there was a moment today <laughs> where uh, I was. I was like, just eat some breakfast and my girlfriend wanders into the kitchen and just like puts her, her hand on, you know, essentially her ass. Right. Right. But kind of inside the shorts that she was wearing. Okay. And I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, right. Like none of the clothes have pockets and it's just a tick of mine to like put my hand in my back pocket. Right. And short of that, I just go right down the pans. <laughs> Which was really funny to me. I, you know, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. Right, right. I was like, you well, know, I, I'm not... It's acceptable for guys to sit there with their hands down their fucking crotch. Do you know what I mean? Like, and just... Right, well... I'm that... comfort in that way. Why can't a girl do that? It's like, ooh. Yeah, I mean, but this was like, you know... I mean, th- this was around the corner where the fudge is made. This wasn't right down front. Uh, right yeah but yeah i thought oh, wait, it, was it like right down the middle like right up in her ass no 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 it was like oh, on okay. it it was like on the full cheek. cheek yeah 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 it was right. just okay. like yeah, it that's, was that's fair enough. right no it was nothing shocking you know it was just like what are you doing i i yeah. just i was i was unfamiliar did she have like the thumb poking out like cute oh uh, yeah 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 I, i'd do that yeah totally like she she had her hand in, in a back in your pocket, pocket. Yeah. but it's just in down the waistband instead that's right don't you do that on other people like if you're you know they do that gross couple thing where you're walking arm in arm 
And if they don't have a pocket, you just put it down. Can no, you... that just that just me. I mean, <laughs> if you're asking, <laughs> can you do thing. that? The answer is yes. Should you do that? Absolutely not. Probably not. Yeah. Well, screw you. I don't go by conformity. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> live your own life. That's what I say. But you're definitely. <laughs> Like you were gonna get looks if you just got your hand down the back of somebody's pants. Are you? Yeah, yeah. of course. At least really? for me. Okay. I would be like, hey, yeah, hey, no, hey, I won't, hey. I won't do that. Keep that I'm at not home. I'm gonna feel like my hands right down there, like I'm having a nice cheeky feel, but just like you know, like the thumb over the waistband, just nicely comfort, not moving, just like you would in a po- back pocket. But just if they've not got a pocket, or if their pockets are too tight. Because they've got a nice big old junk in their trunk, like you can. No, I mean, if the pocket's too tight, you just you got to keep the hand out of there. Because you're going to lose circulation. This is more. This is less about propriety than it is about like you're going to lose a finger. Practicality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, but this and this. So this is why you can put your hand down the waistband, and I. I Hmm. Uh, all right i i don't know that we're going to reach a conclusion on this so any oh, any I other that is no. <laughs> any any other ghost stories before we get into our no, that's it. we got those two it just it, they made me chuckle and i thought you'd find them funny too they're fantastic and i encourage any listeners out there if you are in possession of stories of ghostly love uh or just have a read on ghost money if you're like hey by the way ghosts actually mm-hmm. do have a currency Oh, not crypto though. Not crypto, because we've already made that joke. <laughs> I know, but like, it was a good one. Um, I'm pleased with myself. Um, yeah, just real quick though, as well, there was something that I, was also, I found on the internet. So mm-hmm. last episode, you were talking about um, about your lovely lady friend and her toilet habits, mm-hmm. and we had a whole discussion about that. So I sent you something which was quite funny, and <laughs> I just want to read it out. Uh, so there's this thing, it's a, um, an internet, like a Instagram page called at Fess Hole. Mm-hmm. It's got a toilet paper. So I assume that this whole page is just about shit stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was staying in a hotel and brought a girl back. She said she was going to freshen up and gave me a wink. I heard the tap come on and I thought she was planning sex in the shower. So I burst in. She was having a shit and turned on the tap to cover the noise. Yeah. 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 I feel like that's on him. He should have known that if you're just busted in like you're you know raiding the place for cocaine and <laughs> and discover yeah. something like this then that's on you yeah i feel like that is right yeah, like you, that's where you give it a knock and like hey what are you doing in there and yeah if- i feel like that's a, yeah like a little like cheat you know she's being all coy and w- winking about it and then you kind of knock on like oh hey baby what's got you know and then she has the time to go get the fuck out mm-hmm. i'm busy <laughs> right like it's a bathroom you you gotta yeah. understand that there's about five different things that could be happening in there At only least. one of which needs to involve you yes exactly mm-hmm. um, everything I, else is an absolute solo mission <laughs> you're a solo mission yes <laughs> <laughs> and your mission should you choose to accept it <laughs> Uh, uh yeah i'm a i'm a big believer in that and you know the the other exception right is like kids because sometimes you just got to be like you know kick in the door see what's going on because the shower's been right. on for 45 minutes you're like what are you doing in there yeah yeah even then that is only up to a certain age i feel yeah 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 but i uh, we we're still definitely at the age of what is going on? What the on fuck are you doing you in it? Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And for me, for sure. I have to, like, uh, this is just part of my day now, is I have to do sweeps of the upstairs where the kids' rooms are just mm-hmm. to, like, root out any potential messes before they get so bad that it's going to make me angry. You know, like, it, it's like, let's just nip, like, a little mess is fine. But yeah. a little mess turns into a giant fury inducing mess over the course of a couple just, of days. Yeah, it escalates quick. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And because mm. they're 11 and 12 and disgusting little human beings, that I'm like, all right, you, this toilet needs to be flushed. Here is a empty package of Lunchables under your bed. You know, like all that stuff where you're just like, Kill, clean all of this up. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, when there's like food 
that's when it's like, nah. That's not yeah, okay. that uh, that's a thing that we have put a kibosh on of like you can't eat upstairs, but then we go to bed and the kids like uh, again I've, they're like raccoons, and as soon as the <laughs> sun goes down, it's <laughs> they all they go into the kitchen <laughs> to to grab whatever food. Raccoons or gremlins? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, the, yeah, she, honestly, my girlfriend refers to them as gremlins. Um, She's not wrong. Yeah, 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 and. So that's why I have to do the daily sweep of just like what food packages are now up here. And by the mm. way, how dare you eat the potato chips that I like? <laughs> yeah, no, that is a criminal offense for sure. Yeah, I like the barbecue baked lays. Keep your hands off of them. Fucking A. Or, absolutely. You fucking draw that line. Yeah. yeah. Lay out those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, there's a, a empty bag of barbecue baked lays in the, in the bathroom toilet. Fucking not in the mess. toilet itself, like the bathroom trash can. Yeah, no, I got, yeah, no, I got, yeah. I got not a, not actually in the toilet. Um, I didn't figure that they were doing that thing where they sit backwards on the toilet and use, like, the, the toilet sink or whatever it's called, like, as a table. Yeah, I mean, let's not put <clears throat> it past them. That's, that feels like a thing <laughs> that I would catch them doing. Like, what are you doing? And they're, like, half, half, like, mouths are half open and with, like, food falling out going, what? Right. Well, what do you mean? I thought just I'm totally fine. I thought just eating while I shit was just how you did it. Um. Anyway, so let's talk yeah. about soci anyway. sociopaths. Speaking of children, yeah, let's talk about sociopaths. Yeah, fucking little sociopaths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, uh, I have recently had some dating experience with. I genuinely, this is not hyper hyperbole. This is not me being over the top or exaggerating. Genuinely, do think that he is a sociopath. Mm -hmm. um i will not name names mm -hmm. though if you listen to previous episodes you could probably work it out um but will not name names just because um i am not a doctor or a psychiatrist and cannot say this for absolute certainty other than the behaviors that i have seen and in classic me chose to ignore because good and bad so <laughs> um but yeah so um i just thought it'd be quite interesting to kind of um talk about not necessarily even just dating sociopaths but just date it's like dating people where you've like seen loads of red flags or like um you know you just behavior that is maybe kind of like huh that'll ah, be all right <laughs> all you right. know so let's define terms first of all because my my understanding of sociopath based on some light googling Right. Is a, a sociopath is someone that doesn't have a clear sense of right and wrong mm -hmm. and mostly ignores the feelings of others. Like has no, yes. doesn't have uh, a sense of shame or guilt or conscience. Yeah. And has a real hard time empathizing with other people. Like he, they cannot see the perspectives from other people. Like, you know, you can't put themselves in your shoes. They're like, can you not see how that makes me feel? Right, right, no. right, right. No, I cannot. You know, like I can understand the words that you are telling me on paper, but in terms of any real kind of emotional connection to that, join a blank. Right. Got nothing. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. So that is that is our definition we are moving forward with. For, yeah, for that's the kind of so. thing. I mean, I'm sure there's more complexity to it. And I don't think, you know, no one here is trying to claim that we are psychiatrists or have any sort of professionalism within that field. But yeah, based off some like Googling and experience, that is is kind of the, at least the areas that we'll be focusing on on this okay. episode. So as you're dating this unnamed gentleman, mm -hmm. what was your first tip off that, oh, he may not have feelings the way the rest of us do? do. God, the first thing. Oh, God. Uh, I would say... Um, it, this was a very, very small red flag. And I say small red flag because compared to the other shit that unraveled, it's small. Um, I probably should have taken more notice of it. Um, according to this person, every single one of their exes were psychos. Mm, yeah. This is the old rule of if you run into an asshole once during the day, you ran into an asshole. If you run into assholes all day long, you're probably an asshole. Yeah, you're, you're the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he also has, this is again, not, uh, this is a, this is a situation of every elephant is gray, but not every gray thing is an elephant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but he has real unresolved childhood trauma Mm -hmm. and abuse, Mm -hmm. a history of of receiving abuse. And certain behaviors kind of came out that seemed to, he was essentially revisiting those traumas through the types of people that he dates. Um, Okay. I'm familiar with this move. Go on. He would find, he would seem to find genuine connection. So this kind of goes, I don't know, because I I don't know any of the people that he was speaking about. Um, So I can't say whether or not his exes were psychos. From the stuff that he told me, yeah, if that's happened, that's pretty fucking awful. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so either it's not true and he's, he's making this up or it is true. And we're trying to, he's dating his mother over, over again. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's that, that is unsurprising. Mm -hmm. And I would like to think I'm not a psycho. And actually like he would often say how (laughs) I'm so different from the other girls and blah, blah. And also, um, but also I would genuinely hear him. Like if he, like I'm a very empathetic person. So like if he was telling me something, I'd really listen, I'd empathize. I would, you know, apparently I would make, I would be a very safe space for him Mm -hmm. and I would comfort him. And um, he would like tell me all kinds of things. And, um, but I'm the one person and like, I never... I never did anything. I don't feel like that was abusive. Like I was just there for him and we were friends first, like for a little while. Um, and so we always said, cause it wasn't, um, he wasn't a boyfriend. It was kind of like a situation ship, should we say? Mm-hmm. Best. Um, but like, we always said friendship first and all of this. And I genuinely believed that felt that. And so I always wanted to make sure that if there was, you know, it wasn't necessarily all about sex. Like, you know, there were times where we would just sit and hang out and chat. And um, I was the one who he couldn't see a future with. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were the one that potentially could be serious. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And he would, and he literally said, like, I've tried, I've tried. He's like, I don't know why. I really like you. You're going really well, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but I just can't see it. And yet you'll have these other people come in who uh because basically what happened is um he i can't say cheated because we weren't officially together but like we had spent basically every day with each other for about five months Mm -hmm. um and we weren't hooking up with other people it wasn't like it was off the cards but we just weren't and um he kind of had reassured me that he was going away on this trip and i had nothing to worry about gave me gave me uh you have a billion and one chance that i'm going to be hooking up with someone after also telling me i wish you were here i can't wait to see you and all of this um <clears throat> and you know buying me um souvenirs and everything you know buying me gifts um calling me on the first day chatting to me for like half an hour so this is all we're not dating mm-hmm. but this is his behavior as well he's away right about two hours before he hooks up with someone Oof. yeah and doesn't tell me i found out from his friend who he went on that trip with when i confronted him about it when he got home this is what he told me i said you gave me a billion and one chance do you know what he turned around and said what never said it was impossible Ugh. Ugh. like oh bitch you gave me better odds than the lottery should i go and buy a fucking ticket you know uh, that sucks and uh-huh and the fact that he was you know like I, I guess you could make the argument that he was doing all the other stuff like you know the phone calls and the buying gifts and stuff to kind of you know assuage his sense of guilt or, or something that, oh no that was all before he got with her right well no that's what but i mean w- was it planned to get with this girl or was it just no no it wasn't it happened it just happened he's now dating her even like and what I found out is she has, again, a lot of commonalities with his mother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. And she's very controlling. She's very, um, like, she won't let him go out without her permission. 
she will tell him what or what not to buy people that she deems appropriate or inappropriate you know or like she won't let him like if she comes to stay like he can't and I know flat out, flat out that this drives him crazy. Like she won't leave him alone. She won't give him any space. She'll be with him for like five because she lives abroad. Like so, um, she'll spend like a week with him, and it's like can't go any PlayStation. You can't do this. I need like we need to be joined at the hip this whole time. And he's the guy who only has a very limited social battery anyway. And one of the things he says, because I, I said to him totally without any kind of context or knowledge that or anything, I just said like if I'm gonna stay with you for a little while, because sometimes I stay with him for a few days at a time. Like dude, you don't have to like you know i can go and like read my book if you want to play your playstation with your mates whatever like because you only have a certain amount of like sociability that you can give like that's cool and i'm aware i'm, a, I'm an ex extrovert so i kind of have a lot of energy so if that becomes too much please just say like i'll go make a coffee i'll go chill like in the living room or something with my book for a couple of hours or you know whatever like and he always really appreciated that and then he's obviously gone and again he's he's gone up to me oh i can't see this working and then he's literally gone for exactly the type of person that he always does who's controlling and abusive and essentially his mother yeah but if you try and tell him any of this like he'll just go, he'll just like you know try and justify it but the other thing as well is that when i was having this discussion with him um he turned around and he was just like look I'm they go, bring it back to us more sociopathic tendencies um he was like he said to me uh um well you know it's my life and I'm just gonna do what I want because it's my life to live and I said I do understand that but what happens if your actions hurt people that you care about I don't care right yeah, yeah. I mean that again textbook sociopathy at that point yeah he's just like I don't care because that they're not my that you know my life is my life and if you're going to get hurt, well, I can understand that, but it's not going to stop me doing what I want. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, and I sucks. remember, I remember we were watching um, the most hated man on the internet. Did you ever see that Netflix documentary? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So for people who haven't seen it, it's a guy. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Oh, it's a fucking chode ass name. Like Hunter Moore. I want to say it's a Hunter Moore. And he essentially he invented revenge porn with that like. Um, what's it called that website like are you up website or any is anyone up i think it's called or something it got yep. taken down because obviously it's all illegal and shit now but yeah he basically got revenge porn um to be illegal well he didn't like his actions did and we're watching this documentary and seeing how the victims of this guy in this website have all been horrifically um affected by what these things which were they were either manipulated or images were stolen off their emails and all of this. And he turns around to me and he was just like, look, I'm not defending him. He's like, but these girls really should have known better before they put it out on the internet. I was like, are you, are you, are you, I was like, I've sent you shit. And he was just like, well, yeah. He was like, maybe you should know better. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> okay. What about like the shit that you've sent me? He was just like, well, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah okay. i mean that's that, uh, i mean it's tough to tell if that's like being a sociopath or just being an asshole right right but yeah. again it was just this complete lack of empathy I'm like do you not understand though like how this was done to these people like and he was just like yeah but they put themselves in that position <laughs> um right okay like yeah it's just fucking mental nut job stuff and what's crazy is how he comes across as the nicest person the most friendly i'm always here for you you ever need to talk like anytime before we got together when i was having problems or if i was like stressed out about stuff he'd be like do you want to go like we can just go for a chat do you want to like you know do you want to just like go get a coffee and we can just chat and he would listen and he would seem so empathetic and he jokes around and he's so clever about not getting like not getting people to talk to each other about him until he met me because I tell everyone everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and um yeah, there's a lot that's come out. Um so yeah, don't don't tell me shit if you don't want me to tell other people because I will eventually sooner or later. Sorry. Um but yeah, and he comes across as like the nicest guy. And everyone was so shocked by his behavior because of course I went around and told everyone that we knew. And they were like, what, really? And I'm just like, yeah. And, they were, and then they started putting things together and they're like, holy shit. Because he just comes off as a fucking Ted Bundy. He even actually looks a bit like Ted Bundy. A lot of people do make that comparison. And um, 
yeah and like it's crazy and um and I remember when I was watching Get Out for this prep and the scene that's just it's one of my favorite scenes when she's on the phone to Rod Mm -hmm. and she her voice is so full of emotion and you know and and worry and oh my god and all this but her face is just dead Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it and I've always found that so fascinating but this time was because I haven't watched this film for a couple of years this is the first time that that actually freaked me out because it was like looking at him because yeah like it was like wow you know how to say the words and you know how to do the voice but on the inside you are dead right yeah you know it was so harrowing to watch like i don't use that word often but fuck it was just like it hit different this time you know because i was just like wow i've i've seen that person you know i've been close to that person or at least i thought i was close to that person and um because i never truly was and that's the hardest thing is that you question everything because everything has been a lie and all those moments that you sh- thought you shared meant nothing all those things that you would joke about or you'd have like your little in jokes your little stories meant nothing you know and like it's such a horrible weird realization that this entire relationship whether it's a, a situation ship a boyfriend girlfriend friendship whatever if you've had a long-term interaction with someone like that, it makes you question everything because you don't know what's real. For sure. For sure. Um, if anything. Right. Well, in, you know, that that's the, the only thing to measure that against is time, right? Like you, you have to give the person enough time to be themselves yeah, and that just doesn't happen in the first couple three months. You know, it's it, you know my experience at least has been it takes about like six months to a year before you really see who a person is. Yeah, and, yeah, and this is, we actually were friends for about a year in total. Um, we had about five months seeing each other, and then I was about a month overlap where we still kind of had a bit of a. Because he, again, he kind of fed me lies. Mm-hmm. Um, and because he had started seeing that that girl and still continued to sleep with me. And because uh, we went on a trip together as friends, which we had booked. We always said we were going to be friends, friendship first, all the rest. And we'd booked this trip for a couple of, well, for one night overnight. And um, we were like, well, you know, we're mates. We'll just go as mates. All good. And then obviously, you know, sharing a room together with a lot of sexual tension, one thing led to another. Um, But he'd also tried to crack on to me beforehand, even when he was the one who had sort of said, actually, maybe we shouldn't. Um, Because I was like, well, look, you know, this has happened, but we always knew that this was probably going to be a summer thing anyway. Like, why don't we just like until the end of the month, September will come around and we'll just go back to being friends all good no worries I basically just wasn't ready to kind of lose good sex I'll be honest Mm -hmm. um and he was like yeah yeah cool all good and then um he messaged me and said like oh actually I've been thinking about it and maybe it's not such a good idea I was like all right fair enough I get that and then like a week later he's cracking on to me again and I'm like dude what are you doing you literally told me a week ago that you didn't want to and you know that like this has been hard for me so what the fuck are you doing and he was like oh yeah no you're right and then it was a couple of days later after that that we ended up hooking up for the last time um and that whole time what I wasn't aware of and what he flat out lied to me about because I asked about it and he was like nah is that he had been like not dating because they hadn't seen each other but he had been messaging with the intent to date that whole time with this girl and the next weekend he came uh, she came over to visit stayed with him all weekend he bailed on our plans that we had made for that weekend and then phoned me to be like oh yeah so I'm dating this person now and out of respect for her I feel that we, our friend like, we shouldn't be friends out of respect for her where the fuck was the respect for her when your dick was in my fucking mouth <laughs> last weekend <laughs> you know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what you know where the fuck was the respect for me this whole fucking time um you know and uh and it's just again it's just stuff like that I was just like uh-huh wow okay I see you 
you know and I was just like so this whole friendship first this whole thing literally a week ago that you were saying that I would like our friendship was most important and actually you didn't want anything to ruin that and you would never I was like dude when you start dating though that's going to be hard like you're going to have to have a conversation like what you're going to do and he's like well if they want me to give up our friendship um and someone who's really important to me for someone who I've known two minutes then that's just not going to happen <laughs> okay then bro like a week later so like again it's just one of these things where I was just this pattern of him saying what he felt needed to be said at the time or felt what I wanted to hear or all of this and it was all just so that like it none of it was meant he didn't mean any of it it was literally just so that he could get what he wanted in that moment yeah again that that leans into the textbook sociopathy yeah of like I right I, I'm saying doing whatever I need to to further my own ends and not, yeah. you know, be, because I'm, you know, doing a, a thing for another person. It's, you know, I mean, we kind of joke about the the kids being a little sociopaths, but it, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> true in that you have to... Oh, they, are, they, well, they have no empathy until about the age of six. Right. They'd only start to learn empathy about the age of six. And, and you have to explain to them, like, you know, sometimes you do things for other people without any uh, uh like agenda what or yeah with 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 yeah with, without an agenda without any hope of personal gain yeah and and there are just some people that you run into through the course of your life that just don't have that piece of themselves that it it is huh. forever about what can you do for me what can you do to make my life better and it's all yeah. transactional, right? Like that's the nature of a transactional relationship is it's not about helping anyone or doing something for someone for the sake of doing something for someone. It's, yes. It, it is what, it, what am I gaining from this? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And this is the thing is, it's, it, and these are all traits that we see within get out with Rose and how, you know, her end game, her agenda with, with Chris you know she just manipulates everything so perfectly she plays the roles that she needs so that he trusts her so he feels comfortable with her and like you know even when she knows that he's seen the photos and he's the suspect of everything going on she's still like playing this role she's still trying to kind of reassure him just so she can trap him with her, her family you know and it's and again how like her expressions can just drop because it's just it's all a facade none of it's real yeah there the, one of the things i wanted to mention about get out that is is sort of sits alongside this mm. is i think you know the the fact that rose is is always playing this role you know i and i i suppose it's so that eventually she is going to be in a place where she's going to have to do this you know yeah. uh, that it, it's it'll be passed down through the years or what have you mm -hmm. but also that she keeps it up to the very moment that she can't like the the moment where you know he's sort of revealing like this is what's going on with your parents get your stuff like we're gonna get out of here yeah and and her delaying just enough for him to be like oh i see what's happening you're in on this too and then the facade yeah. just drops away yeah exactly and, and the yeah, I, that that's truly, you know, what, what's her name? Allison Williams? Is that her name? Yeah, uh, yeah. That, like, just a great moment of acting of, I'm going to be able to show this incredible, like, sympathy and urgency and then just let it all drain away from my face. Yeah, exactly. Just literally take off that mask. And because she's got him in the exact position that she wants him in. Yeah. And she's manipulated this whole weekend. I mean, obviously, there's other manipulations going on with, with her family. But, you know, she's got him there. She's, you know, saying all the right things to reassure him with, like, the subliminal racism going on and, you know, all the more direct racism going on. And, like, you know, and how she acts all like, oh, my God, my parents are so embarrassing. I'm so outraged and blah, blah. And, like, all of this to give him that level of and that camaraderie and that un they have that unity. You know, it's them versus kind of thing almost and then to find out that like your only ally in this strange weird scenario is actually the master manipulator the whole time you know like to have the rug pulled out from under you like that it's just yeah 
I mean, I'm really grateful that I didn't end up in his situation specifically, mm-hmm. <laughs> but having that feeling of just this one moment where like the whole, the whole thing just kind of like gets pulled out from under you yeah. and you kind of truly see what's going on. Fuck that, that, that hits harder than a fist. You know? Yeah. It, the, the scene with the cop at the beginning, when she kind of gets on his side and, and, and is actually like, you know, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be outraged on your behalf. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing is, uh, you know, one, one of the, I, I, like we were talking about one of those kind of sociopathic things of like, I'm going to prove to you that I am so in your corner that when you start to doubt me, this is a thing that you can look back on and, yeah. you know, like, oh, well, yeah, but yeah. why would I doubt her? Because she was the one standing up for me when I, even I wasn't interested in standing up for myself. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, that that's how it, yeah. you know, significant her. But yeah. So many examples of that. Yeah. Um, that I've experienced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, it's, and, and that's a thing that when you run into people like that, that that's like truly terrifying that, you know, when you meet someone who, you know, is that emotionally manipulative that draws you in, in that mm-hmm. way, like that's the stuff that's like, Oh, this is just terrifying. Yeah. Um, it is. you know, because like you said, it's kind of harrowing um, where, where you realize like, Oh, someone is just using my, the innate desire for human beings to trust one another. Yeah. You know, and especially for someone like me, who's so empathetic. Like I'm a real empath type person. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, I'm I'm trying to think of a good example recently. Like fortunately I'm in a place where most of the people that I'm with, you know, and that I spend time with are, Mm -hmm. are not that way, you know? Yeah. Like, um, they're they're genuinely like nice and and caring and friendly people, and it's one of the reasons I'm glad that you know, knock on wood, we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But uh, mm-hmm. like I I hope that I never have to like seriously date again because it's the worst, you know, because it it, it is just a, a hive of scum and villainy out there, mm-hmm. and yeah because it's so easy to run into those people who are like who who are looking at you as a way to fulfill their own agenda whatever that agenda mm-hmm. is and not looking at yeah. you as you yeah and for me it was very typical situation where i was in an extremely vulnerable emotional place mm-hmm. when things started and i confided in him about the stuff that had been happening with me and my ex and how those there was like a lot of there was a lot of manipulation going on in that scenario as well a lot of deceit um and I had been really struggling with coming to terms with it and it got to the point where I just couldn't do it anymore and I was going to leave and he was my friend through all of that and then later on he would take that information and he would use it against me and he would use it as ways to manipulate me you know oh that sucks Um, that like that yeah. that makes and you want to just everything. like take a tire into your windows. Yeah, he knew everything, and he would he would use it as ways to manipulate my feelings because of the things that I had experienced. He would flat out lie and try and tell me things that he had gone through that were similar. So obviously, I then felt a connection through joint trauma, and then he would whenever I would kind of question him or kind of like go huh so didn't you say and then he would turn it around and just be like and then basically gaslight me and use the examples of things that I had told him in confidence to make me question myself and he would do it all with a smile on his face as though he was comforting me and holding me Mm. it's just literally like and it's shit because you know like i i haven't gotten um i haven't been in anything 
really serious or anything since and I mean not that it was really serious but you know that wasn't I haven't been dating anyone consistently um and I am so worried about how that could potentially imprint on later relationships because I thought I could I thought I knew this guy I thought I could trust him and do I ever want to make that mistake again and not only just him but other people as well like he's the only person who I genuinely think is a sociopath for lots of reasons um but it's definitely not the first time I've been manipulated by by people who I've trusted and it's just like I never want to be one of those people that let future uh, so previous traumas affect future good things to potentially happen but at the same time psychology is psychology and you can't always help that so but at least I'm, I'm kind of like well at least I'm kind of like aware of stuff but at the same time it's a double-edged sword because if you you don't want to be paranoid right i mean but that's the push-pull of dating in general is i want to be vulnerable in a way that allows me to be open to having a genuine relationship but also yeah you know it's sort of the trust but verify thing uh yeah like i i want to trust somebody and and open myself up and be my true self so that mm. you don't again you don't wind up six months down the road where you're like oh this thing that i was doing was just to make you happy but i hate doing it you know yeah yeah or it means nothing to me and i i mean like i get i mean you know going back to the film like can you imagine how i mean can you imagine chris dating again right right like, like, yeah. what, the fuck is the, what the hell does his future relationships look like yeah yeah he'd be jumping at shadows the, the last person is, the last person i was with trying to steal my body yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah how how do you this, come back from that um i just yeah how do you come back from that just like do you know what celibacy is the life for me <laughs> you know you but know? it's interesting like when you were talking about this guy um you know like i don't i don't believe that i'm a sociopath or anything but i do kind of sympathize with that cycle that he seems to be stuck in of dating someone who's bad for you because yeah. i know i did that for a long time too just mm. I, again this is all like you know pre-therapy and whatnot but prior to that before i had a therapist that was like why are you dating people that are you know you're doomed to have any kind of real relationship with um yeah you know, but I definitely did that where you're, you're kind of repeating the same mistakes over and over again, because you're looking for, I, I, at least in my case, I think I was looking for the person that was like the people that had hurt me in the past, but this was going to be the one who didn't. Uh, no, for him, I think it could be that, but I, I think also it's a punishment. Um, because, um, fuck it i've been honest about the show the kind of sex that he enjoys is punishing oh wow like for him but yeah, no like he likes to dole out punishment oh, 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 oh okay yeah that's that's a little a little weird i mean not like everybody's into their own thing don't get me wrong like within the balance of a healthy and loving relationship you can do all kinds of fun stuff but right if that right. is the only means of and again, it was one of those like light bulb moments. Like, you know, you get that, that kind of like the rose tinted glasses kind of come away and you're like, oh shit, you know, like, and he told me that <clears throat> one time with his ex, he choke holded her to the point where she passed out. And he says he didn't realize that she passed out. I'm like, I don't know how you don't realize this. He didn't stop. He didn't stop banging her. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. And then it was like, I don't know. 10 seconds later or something and then he realized and stopped i'm like how do you not how do you not realize that someone's suddenly gone limp yeah that's scary if somebody told me you that, know? I would, yeah i would like you know it's like if somebody tells you like i would you know i stay up at night and watch you sleep and and not uh, the romantic kind you know i'm just <laughs> yeah. like i just stare at you <laughs> and think of all the different things i could do with and to you um, while you're in this vulnerable position yeah right well i mean that's right that's exactly what it is is yeah while you are vulnerable yeah and yeah 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 that stinks oh man that's frightening um, yeah like and, he has a real like penchant for rage sex like angry slam you up against the wall all, all kinds of stuff like violent sex yeah. like not just kinky not just like oh yeah some spanking or using a catherine wheel or 
bondage or do you know what I mean but actual rage violent sex yeah that's it's like that's all his freaky. deepest fantasy and everyone who he had who he has an ongoing thing that he could he like who he would call an actual girlfriend not me mm-hmm. <laughs> but like anyone else is essentially would treat him in the same way apparently that like this he wouldn't say he he was never he never said i'm i'm repeating i'm dating my mum again and again but from the behaviors that he would describe to me and from what i've heard from other people who know him um he's dating his mother over and over again and uh, so i mean so it's just it, it's like a weird extra level of ick that he's you know right so that, that's like just his means his mother sexually yeah that's just his means of communicating emotion is to be violent or or hurtful because that's all he he has gotten and so therefore is is replicating that over and over again yeah oh that's really yeah i'm not saying this out loud and honestly actually i'm really not sure if there's someone who i should talk to about this because i could just imagine him being the next like a netflix documentary in a few years yeah so i mean well it's just we look into that in fairness well but uh, you know it's not the most like that's not crazy because you run into people like this unfortunately a bunch and you know you know not necessarily the you know angry sex part although i'm sure there's uh plenty of that mm-hmm. but you know the the thing that is that you run into just like like everybody's had that that boss or that coworker or you know that friend or whatever like i you know i'm thinking of a guy that i i knew for a long time that was just it took me a long time to reach the point where i was like oh i'm only as valuable as what i can do for them Mm -hmm. and that stinks yeah um so yeah it's and and you know again to tie back to the movie that's sort of the whole gig right like there's the the racial component of it but the underlying psychology of it is you know we're we're going to take this person that we think of as less than us because our lives are more valuable than theirs and yeah and we're just going to take the attributes that we want yeah and that there there's a weird sort of sociopathy to racism writ large is yeah, is, is yeah. that kind of knee-jerk belief that oh well their emotions and and feelings and ambitions and stuff don't matter compared to mine yeah it's almost like you don't count as people right yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah you know, weirdly, yeah. so, the, or speaking of sociopaths, so we we were having dinner Always. with some friends the other night. Yeah. And they were telling a story about, it's sort of a friend of a friend, so, you know, follow the the, the weird uh, breadcrumb trail of this. But right. the friend of the woman we were having dinner with, her father uh, was just an old school style racist. Right. You know, like, this is the South, and he was prime candidate but this is where the psychology gets interesting is yes he was racist no doubt about that but he had a series of affairs that came out after he got old and started to get senile and and that kind of thing and they were like the family was starting to track down some money and a lot of money he had spent on these women all of whom were black Oh. And and so the weird psychology seemed to be that it didn't it didn't count as much these affairs of his or that no one would find out because they were black. It was a really like as we were talking oh. about we were like it's a it's a weird psychology. Yeah. Mhm. That that this guy displayed. And, you know, it, it's kind of tough to wrap your brain around if if you don't think this way. But that seemed yeah. to kind of be the case was like, oh, it's it's not cheating as much because it's it's count. outside my race. Yeah, that's so horrific. Right, right. 
you know, I mean, he's, I, oh. th- you know, that guy's dead now, uh, and the world is is probably a better place for it. It's like good riddance, not shit. Yeah, but it was, sh- oh. like, but again, you know, in in terms of get out, it was but like I bet it's he, that I bet kind he of thing. Made- if he's spending money and sending them money, I bet he made them feel good. Like, in, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean that in a justification. I just mean that, in t- again, in a very sociopathic way, like using them, making them feel certain ways so he can get what he wants and then just kind of like shoving it under the rug when it suited him. Oh, absolutely. Like he was buying furniture oh. and stuff like that. And I mean, I hope that they were using him as much as, as he was using them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely. That is, yeah, that's, yeah it was that's so gross right it was it was totally gross um and and, but as we were talking about we were just like oh my god and but but the fascinating part of it was the here's how i think i can get away with it yeah or here's how it it kind of doesn't matter as much it it kind of justified it in his own mind yeah 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 and but to anyone any rational reasonable decent natured person that's just it's just awful and that's the thing is like with you know you can you can explain the situation or you can describe a behavioral pattern to someone like that and they won't see an issue to anyone else it's just like how can how can you not see an issue with that yeah like and it's and you kind of reach this wall of like well you can't see it and you can see it and there's no way that it's going to check like nothing is going to make that person see that nothing anything is going to make that person not see it that way like and so it's just this is where it it's just it's it blows my mind because as someone who as I said like you know I'm very empathetic and I, I put myself in people's shoes probably more than I should and I and this was a thing like I can't I'm usually very good at re- <laughs> well I think I'm usually very good at reading people apparently fucking not um, but like you know I tend to think that I'm like I do have for the most part a good read on people um I'm probably a bit too trusting to be fair but like um I it just it it astounds me because i thought i knew the person who he was i thought i understood that person i thought i connected with that person and for that person to not exist really when it comes down to it mm-hmm. that person is not real mm-hmm. and no matter what they put out there no matter how many gifts or nice things they say or shared moment that that's it doesn't it doesn't exist and the person behind that who does exist I just, they're a chasm to me. They're a complete black hole. I, I get no reading. I cannot understand it. And that to me is like, it's, it's terrifying. Like I, for someone like me who, who just empathizes all damn day, to find someone who I just cannot get a read on at all, really, in any true, in, in any real genuine true form, it's fucking terrifying. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, uh, uh, somebody wearing that, you know mask of humanity or our mask of you know being a good person uh and only to discover like oh they're they're you know a completely rotten and awful individual like that's you know it it sucks when like the best case scenario is you find out quickly right like that's if, yeah if, if everything goes right they're bad at hiding it but the problem with people who are that manipulative is they're awfully good at hiding. It's what, what makes them, you know, like able to, to, you know, wear that mask of, of sort of decent humanity mm. is. And also as well, they will often, even when they're called out on shit, they'll often either lie or, um, you know, exaggerate or, un- or underplay stuff so that they come out. They I, a, can provide a reasonable explanation or at least a more reasonable explanation uh, and also that they'll come out kind of smelling of roses and it's only and like they but there's like that again it's that manipulation that they know that you're the type of person to maybe not necessarily go beyond that like if you've been provided an explanation okay I trust you that's fair enough to me mm-hmm. and it's only been afterwards where like I've gone oh yeah what did they what did he say to you about this because this is what he said and it turns out well that's not what he told me and that's not what he said to me, but he told me this. And I was like, and I've been like, nah, that's not what like and it's only when I've like started people who we we share in common, we've all started talking to each other, has the bullshit really come to light because it none of it none of it is in sync, none of it matches. And he'll just tell whatever he feels will get him out of whatever situation he's in or whatever that other person wants to 
here and trust that no one else is going to talk to each other because he's dealt with it already. Yeah. And all right. So another thing that makes all of this especially gross is there like those kinds of people also play on um, uh, politeness as, as weird as that sounds like, like it's something I thought about when, you know, we were talking about get out again is, you know, so much of that movie hinges on the idea of no matter how weird someone is, um, and, and how, like, like how, how uncomfortable the situation is, there is something about being polite that overrides a mm-hmm. lot of the natural instinct, you know, yeah. to like, Hey, I got to get out of this. And, yeah. and like it happens and get out, but it also happens in the situations you're talking about where you're like, I need to give the person the benefit of the doubt. So I don't seem like I'm a terrible person. Yeah. And, uh, there was a, another movie it's on shutter. Now, if you haven't seen it called speak, no evil. That, oh my God. I was thinking about that. Yeah. I was thinking about that and the invitation. Yeah, right. It's the thing. same kind of thing of speak no evil like fuck me as, up, as weird and terrible and uncomfortable as things get, you tend to want to do the polite thing, mm. but in, in doing the polite thing, you are, you're putting yourself in, you know, in the case of these movies in mortal danger, but more likely in, in the day-to-day real world kind of stuff is you're putting yourself in emotional danger where you're, mm. you know, like when, when the antenna go up and, and start to, uh, you, you start to get some bad vibes off of people a lot of time your natural instinct is to to be like, well, maybe I'm just reading the situation wrong or maybe, you know, I've got low blood yeah. sugar or like whatever it is, like yeah, to take yeah, the yeah. responsibility for that as opposed to, yeah. to just being like, maybe they're just a terrible person. Yeah. And also like, it's all very well and good. Like when you're watching a film or you're seeing a situation from outside that, you know, that situation um, and kind of going like, and being able to see the woods for the trees and go, what are you doing? No, 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 that is weird. That is weird. But when you're in it, you know, and there's that social pressure on you and no one else, Mm -hmm. potentially, like it becomes a lot harder to, you know, be able to push past those um, sort of limitations that you put on yourself with regards to being polite and societal expectations and, you know, and, and everything like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where if you where if you're the manipulator and not only can you see the woods for the trees but you are the one who is kind of in control of it all you know it's very easy to push and nudge and suggest to get that person doing or feeling whatever it is that you want Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean well right because because you know the societal expectation and you know that the person you know opposite you is likely to fulfill that societal expectation whereas yeah. you don't have the same restraints you know like yeah. like you're ju- you're just manipulating the situation as opposed to uh, uh uh like like being part of the situation like you know and that's the problem with like people who are sociopaths is that like they do not see themselves as part of that social contract. They are just no. using that social contract to their their benefit. Yeah, and and that's you know, again, it's just terrifying, right? Like yeah. running afoul of those kinds of people because there's no there's no rules for them. No, no, there's no um. Oh shit! What's the word? Yeah, like there's no rules. There's no uh sort of emotional um like ties to anything that you know there's no there's no guilt there's no right no consequence um, to any of your behavior yeah yeah exactly they, yeah there's no consequences for it because they see themselves as above it yeah and they're not going to get affected and they're not going to feel bad they're not going to feel remorse like i flat out know that this guy doesn't like he's not going to be like ever regretting anything that he's ever done to me or said to me or anything because he will just be like, oh, well, you know, that's what I wanted to do at the time. And, you know, whatever. That, like, he might even go as far as say, oh, that, that's sad that you felt that way. 
but again it's that whole thing of like putting it on that other person and completely like losing all responsibility for your part in it and like yeah just not taking ownership of anything so if even if I were to talk to him now he put the most I would probably get from him is I'm really sorry that you felt that way oh that is just the most disgusting like you know half explanation mm-hmm. semi-apology yeah you know. it's such bullshit oh yeah i'm so sorry that you felt that way it's like oh you just go right to hell yeah yeah you yeah know. you're like you're, was... you're putting you're putting your the consequences of your behavior on me yeah, and that exactly. is exactly i mean again just it is sociopathic <laughs> yeah well right it, and it, and it's saying that it is your fault for feeling bad, not my actions that cause you to feel bad. Yeah, you know? exactly. And yeah, he would have, he would never take any responsibility for anything that he did. And he wouldn't even be able to understand why he should. And that's the other thing as well. Like you can have people who won't, who won't take responsibility, but know deep down that they fucked up, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he just generally wouldn't even see it as his problem. He'd be like, that's the you problem. Like, I'm sorry that 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 was how you felt, but would I change anything that I did? No, because that's that was the best decision for me at the time. And that is literally how pragmatic he would be about it. Yeah, I can't even say like it's not even pragmatic because pragmatic at least, is at least rational. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Right. It's right. It's just I, here, here is how I'm going to explain away that behavior. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Man, yeah. uh, you know that that's the the danger of people is, is unfortunately that they can just be, you know, like they could just drop a drop a bomb on your life, and yeah. and not feel any of that repercussion. And it, it's the thing that you know I think is most frustrating about dealing with people like that is like you're like how how can you fuck up my life to this extent and there and <laughs> none of it gets on you. Yeah. Oh, for reals. Because as I said, when I, things started to get more sexual between me and this guy, I had just come out of a extremely long-term relationship and I wasn't wanting to get with anyone. I wasn't wanting anything long-term. I was maybe going to have a few hookups, but like it, I was not wanting anything, but he made me feel so safe mm. and so cared for and which was like I wasn't used to that for so long and I was constantly the caregiver I was constantly giving and giving and giving and for the first time in so long I had someone who seemed to be giving to me who seemed to be caring for me and being there for me and I was all right after the break it was my decision and it was hard but I knew it was the best thing and I felt good about it and I was ready to move on and then this guy comes along and takes me in his arms and makes me feel like everything's going to be okay when I didn't ask for that it happened that way or he made he made it happen that way and then when everything got pulled out from under me I was left in a worse emotional state than I was at the end of my last relationship and I was like I did not need that I was I was okay I was going to be I was good Mm -hmm. and I and you completely fucked me more than I thought I could was possible and like for the first time i put my trust in someone like that for years and you completely fucked me over and made me feel like i was the problem just fuck you yeah uh you know and then and then i saw him as well a couple of weeks ago and he has the nerve to come up to me and start chatting to me like nothing happened he was telling me about trips he was going on he was telling me like you know oh this has been going on and this i'm like "Mm mm-hmm and like I had to be in that situation with him like I couldn't go anywhere unfortunately but I was like completely just minimal answers like at all and then I just like he just basically walked off because he realized he wasn't going to get anything from me um but I was just like how the fuck after everything can you come up to me and just start telling me about your life and start talking to me like we're pals nah you made your fucking decisions you made your fucking bed now fuck off and lie in it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean that's the only thing you can do is is you you kind of mark that person and just say like all right well i'm never going to deal with this person ever ever again no 
you know, like, I mean, like in the situation you were talking about, like where you're kind of thrust together, then you yeah. just have to be like, all right, I'm going to, you know, do what is socially polite or do what is, you know, socially necessary. Necessary. But, yeah. but that's it, you know, and you just have to, you know, and it, and it sucks because, you know, like, I think we're alike in that we're both very like emotional people and, and live very much by our emotions. And, mm you know, it stinks when you have to be like, Oh, I've got to turn off the spigot on this person because yeah. you know, like this isn't just they, like, it's just, it's, it, it's uh, uh self-defense, you know? Yeah. You have to just completely shut down on it. Like, and yeah, it's always hard when you have to do something like that. Um, but yeah, like I'm the one of these people where I'm like, I'll be there and be there and be there, but you can only push me so far. And then once that's happened, there's not a single thing on earth that you can do for me to reopen that door. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what else, what happens. You are dead to me. Like right. literally skin and bones, walking skin and bones. But you, and know, you are about as dead to me as a person, as I always was to you. You know, like I say those same things to myself, but if somebody comes to me and is like, look, I treated you so badly. I am so, so sorry here like in detail here are the things that i did and here is how i feel bad about it then i'm such a sucker that i'm like oh okay well i'll give you another chance it uh, really does depend but i can genuinely say that if, if if on the absolute no chance that that would ever happen but if hypothetically it did i just tell him good and walk off you well in i mean your situation i think is a a little bit extreme in uh, uh you know in the sense that there's somebody that is like just cover to cover not only socially and emotionally manipulative but also there's this element of like oh you have these anger issues that make it you know unwise to be around yeah. you um, <laughs> yeah so uh all right well do, do we want to say anything about sociopaths before we move into our final sociopaths are bad yeah yeah i mean kind of but also <laughs> kind yeah. of no it's not always the case i just feel like and again i'm not a psychiatrist i'm not i'm not putting every single person who has sociopathic tendencies under this blanket um because like there are it's like psychopaths there are tons of functioning psychopaths mm -hmm. around it's just how your life affects you in that way and how you choose to go about your business basically but yeah so sociopaths who are manipulative can go fuck themselves right who don't have the self-awareness anymore i'll tell you that much <laughs> yeah i mean like there are people who who will kind of tell you up front like oh you here are the things that you're not going to get out of me and yeah. you could you could be like hey you're self-aware and that's great and you know we, we can have a relationship based on those limitations and that's fine Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's when they it, it's when they're trying to disguise it that you know yeah. it, 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 maybe the the larger lesson is you know people who hide what they are if, if if you can be honest with who you are and what you are that is something that can be dealt with because both of you are kind of operating from the same place mm -hmm. or the same type of understanding but the second that somebody is like oh no no i'm a good person and you realize like oh no no they're just hiding the person they really are that's yeah. that's where it becomes yeah. a nightmare yeah um <laughs> it does and you end up strapped to a chair getting your brain invaded by someone else yeah yeah right absolutely right. yeah um all right, well let's let's shift gears and go to something <laughs> slightly less sinister. Right. And go to uh our our final segment, of course. Um of course. the uh Tinder is the is the flesh segment. Yeah, yeah. So I I have something a little bit different for us. Oh please. <laughs> I, I was I was second one of this and I'm already throwing in spanners um but this was just this is something that i sent you because it was just so fucking gross um so this isn't going to be one of the three this is just a little breezy bonus for you mm -hmm. um so there, oh, oh, i just brought up the picture and it's just who did i say he looked like 
There was that Muppet that I said, what's his oh, fucking uh, name? Oh, um, uh, Gonzo. Yeah, Gonzo. I kept thinking Gizmo, and I'm like, that's not right. Yeah, he looks like a human, like a middle-aged human version of Gonzo. Yeah, which is... It's... It, it's not... That is accurate. His fa- His head looks like a thumb. Yeah. With a really big nose coming out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's... And a terrible hairline, terrible receding hairline. It, and he's oh. the grin is let's say dopey yeah um yeah. but yeah, yeah 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 so he he's a real you know he looks like every cliche of what an accountant looks like but all in one face yes but also like an accountant who's taking a picture and someone tells him like show me the fun account (laughs) yeah you know where he's trying to be real like lively and fun and weird and you're like oh no this is he's got his sleeves rolled up a bit you know yeah give the guy kudos for that he's got a top button undone but yeah so but it's going horribly wrong oh so right this guy in your mind okay so i'm on tinder as we all know and um ah oh, he oh. so i haven't i obviously have not matched with this person so there's this thing on tinder for those who don't know if you pay if you pay for a certain amount like pay a certain tier you can get access to different things and you can do different things within the app and he's obviously paid the point where he can send me a private message without having matched with me mm, okay and this this is what he's decided is appropriate to send to me when he's never even said hello to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in my profile, sorry, real quickly, I've said, and I meant this emotion. I really need to change this because people have not been taking, I've meant this emotionally. You can sneer at the, the naivety of this all you want, but I meant it emotionally in my profile. I say, don't hold back on me and I won't hold back on you. Right. Yeah. Right. Understandable might, why you would say that, because again, you're trying to find somebody that is going to be definitely. honest and upfront and etc. Thank you. Yeah. So this is what he took from it. I wouldn't hold back on you for sure. But to be clear, that's me giving. I can promise to make your toes curl with my head between your legs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Just no. advertising. I get it. No. It just, no. What did, what did he expect me to do? Like, go, oh, yeah. I, no, I don't know. It's just, I wouldn't, do you know what? I wouldn't even, his looks, everything, all the judgment we've made on this guy, which in fairness are judgments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even if he was the best looking guy, the fact that he would say something like that to me before he even has said hello, like, I'm all up for being up front. I'm all up for going for, you know, going for what you want and all the rest of it and getting to the point i i do respect that but there is still a slight decorum that you go about these things yeah you You gotta read the room you gotta read the room yeah you start off and you say hi and then you say about how you want to fucking smash me you don't (laughs) you know you kind of have to establish that that person is into you first you know yeah right Uh, i'm a big fan of the notion of don't don't deliver the first strike when it comes right. to this, like, let, and it doesn't have to be overt or anything, but let the other person open the door to the flirty talk. You can build up. And then, right, right, right. You just, you know, you can play a little coy here and there and that kind of thing. But that's, uh, I mean, again, we're talking about. Or you can even just ask, hey, what do you want here for? Yeah. And you can be like, I'm just on here for some fun. Okay, that's my green light. You've matched with me. I've matched with you. We clearly have, like, find each other physically attractive. There's something about our profiles that we find attractive. And, you know, we've said hi, we've done the preliminaries, we've established what we're here for, we're both here for the same thing, crack on, no problem. This guy just doesn't, just none of that. Right. None of that. And he's just literally come out with me, like, and just to clarify, that's me giving, oh, bro, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, the, the just to clarify is, is the fun part of it. Because you're going from DEFCON 4 to DEFCON 1 right away. And you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta build up to that. So yeah, yeah, you ha- yeah you really do. And you know, and my my profile isn't really that suggestive. 
Although I've been told my Instagram's pretty suggestive and I thought it wasn't. So I, I've, apparently I'm not a good judge on this. But I, yeah, I just, I feel like there are, there are steps that you take to get to that level. You don't just go straight in, shoot your shot like that. <laughs> when you haven't even matched. You haven't even matched with that. But I oh, just, oh, okay, it's fine. Whatever, I'm moving on. Um, so we've got, <laughs> we've got three new contestants, shall right. we say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the uh fuck mary kill of tinder is the flesh yes yes so behind door number one we have joe 38 Mm -hmm. and we're kind of going in a different way here this just kind of made me laugh but it was just (laughs) anyway just back from an incredible couple of months working on a scientific research vessel in the red sea and ready to uh, ready for reintegration back into society uh, okay i'm with this so far because it's like all right he, he's kind of teasing the fact that he's got kind of an interesting job and you know yeah 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 okay I, but yeah it just it was quite funny it kind of sounded like a profile for someone who was part of a b-budget movie from like you know they've just been away and they've been like scientific research and some nuclear things gone wrong and now he has three heads mm-hmm mm-hmm but it's just like yeah but at least fun. it opens the door for some conversation it's not starting off with let me tur- curl your to- toes like it is <laughs> yeah. it's fairly innocuous i i don't think it's great but i think it's fairly like yeah. fairly innocent sounding yeah it made it made me laugh yeah yeah um and then we have <laughs> hey Ken, this made me laugh and he's not even wrong um <laughs> i'm gonna send this to you um so hang on let me send this to you a second okay. i'm gonna send it on messenger i might post it on the page because it's already on the internet that's okay isn't it yeah 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 just because it kind of like the photo does help all right all right okay so I'll send that to you i got it okay all right i might block Oof. out his name all though. Right. i might block out his, his not his name his uh his job though because that's a bit high profile oh wow Um, okay all right (laughs) like dating nicholas cage only poorer and less charismatic yeah right there's more on it but that was the bit that got me let me let me give you the one that that because i was gonna say he looks like he's in a morrissey cover band (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah but the nicholas cage is not far off there there is definitely some some nicholas cage in there yeah uh, but credit for spelling nicholas cage correctly uh um, right the one that gets me is the punk poly plant-based combination like i i like the use of alliteration but <laughs> i don't know man vegetarian punk rockers uh a vegan yeah no, just like sorry, I'm vegan yeah yeah right right and also vegan environmentalist and he's into politics that you are you are gonna have a lousy lousy date Mm -hmm. that is you are he is going to be on the soapbox for much of that but yeah okay all right so so we've got nicholas cage Uh uh-huh we've got we've got three heads magoo Uh uh-huh and then we have (laughs) this lady uh called samantha Okay. So first off, it makes me laugh because she works for a charity called Swallow. Fair, fair. All right. <laughs> She's called Samantha. Now this, okay, so I had a bit of a thing where it was like, it, you could play Tinder bingo for the kind of the tropes that come up. And this is one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm chunky, but funky. Chunky, but funky. Not great. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Like. Unless you're, um... oh my god, what the fuck is their name? Who's that? Oh, do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Uh, I do not. Okay, hang on, I'm just going to go on here. One sec. Um, they are, what is their name? Oh, they only have, oh, they don't, oh, they don't have their drag names. Um, I can't remember. There's going to be people screaming at me, but there, there's there's someone who basically is almost a catchphrase chunky yet fuck me. What are they? Ah, oh, anyway, not the point. Uh, unless you are that person, don't say it. I just it makes me cringe so much. 
Yeah. Um, I'm chunky but funky. Have possession of two tiny humans. I'm really hoping that they're, they're her children. Eh, you know, if they're not, it's certainly more interesting. Yeah. I'm a pretty crap lesbian because I'm not vegan and don't like cats. Okay. Okay. Have a little um, fun with it. I'm, I'm down. Likes clean bed sheets. Okay. That's it. All right. All so, right. I'm funky but funky. Have possession of two tiny humans. I'm a pretty crap lesbian because I'm not vegan and don't like cats. Likes clean bed sheets and works for swallow. <laughs> hmm. All right. So let's let's do our ranking. Yeah. Um. Okay. The the chunky but funky is not yes. that's that's a, a bad icebreaker but i think yeah. otherwise not a terrible profile because you get here's what i do i got a couple of kids i'm not yeah. i'm not a vegan but also i'm not a slob yeah okay so yeah. I, I feel like that's a pretty good in a short amount of time a pretty good survey of this person okay cool okay so okay you know, whether or not you're attracted to them, I, I'm going probably top of the list there. Okay. J just on the basis of some thought went into it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so my number two then would be Joe. Oh, wait, so is Samantha your number one? I think so. Oh, okay, all right. And then, And then number two would be the guy who's been on... The the three headed dude, yeah, three heads Magoo. Three heads M Magoo, I think is my number two. Okay. Um, just because it sounds interesting, like I would like some story about like what were you doing out there, mm -hmm. like that. That's an interesting dinner conversation at the very least. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Cage is is pulling up the rear on this one mm -hmm. because for the same reasons, but opposite, like everything about. Like the self deprecating, we didn't get into this. The, the like dating Nicolas Cage, only poor and less charismatic. It's like, well, mm -hmm. what are you doing trying to sell yourself then? You're saying you're poor, you're not very interesting. All your profile says to be is that, actually awkward, right? You're just gonna be a nightmare on a date, yeah. So, you know, I can imagine this guy being the type of person to click at the waiter, right? Right, 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 because not like. Not like, not that it's ever a good thing, but you know, you get some people who are like click for a waiter and it's, it's an arrogance, but it's like a confident arrogance. Yeah. 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 This guy would just do it out of being an asshole because he thinks like, yeah. Also claims to be a freelance journalist, which means unemployed. <laughs> yeah. But then he's put his employer down pretty clearly at the top. Is that right? Um, maybe I missed that. No, no. Yeah. It's oh, at okay. the top and the, and the but... little mini bit but you're freelance you're not on the payroll no so, the thing. so what, which one are you right right so if you're if you're a freelance that means unemployed yeah and yeah i think that he is i i think he would be insufferable on the date yeah and would doesn't have a lot of prospects Three Hits Magoo, at least you're going to get an interesting dinner. I think Chunky But Funky sounds like the most, like, real, upfront, honest person. And, and you know, again, not not trying to put my thumb on any scales here, but if you were going to go out with someone, Chunky But Funky would be my vote because you at least, you can talk about kids together. Right. You know. They're relatable. Yeah, right. Some stuff in common. Mm -hmm. She sounds like she's got a sense of humor about this. Like saying I've got two uh, small humans in my possession is a more interesting way to say that you have two kids. And yeah, we're yeah, assuming yeah. That, that she's not a kidnapper. Right. Or, like I said, the the other uh, possibility is that she does actually have possession of, of two small humans, which is a fantastic story. <laughs> Of like, how did this happen? Or did you purchase them? Are they in some kind of, you know, Wookiee style yeah. life debt? Yeah. So that's, that's my ranking. How do you, how do you fall on this? Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go number one, three heads Magoo. Okay. Because he's been, you know, off for a few months 
doing work and research, he's going to be hungry for it. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. So I reckon he's going to be like, yeah, he's going to be pretty virile at this point. And some interesting stories and possibly like fascinated with like B-movie kind of, you know, it came from the outer space type mm -hmm. things. And um, yeah, the only thing on that is like reintegration back in society. Like, does he, does that, like, is he gonna not know how to behave socially? Is always, but again, could make for funny stories. So I'm not saying I, I want to marry this guy, but I think he'd be the most interesting date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm then I'm, see that. Then, yeah. Then I'm going to go with Chunky Yet Funky, uh, Chunky But Funky. Uh huh. Because of, yeah, kind of the stuff that you've said, like relatable and stuff and, um, yeah, upfront and stuff. So you can probably imagine that she'd be on time and that there wouldn't be any of this, oh, well, what do you want to eat? Oh, I don't mind. What are you in the mood for? It'd just be like, I want tacos. Let's go get tacos. Okay. And I'll tell you the other thing you're going to get with Chunky But Funky is if the date doesn't go well, not a whole lot of hemming and hawing about it. Yeah, yeah. She's not going to lead you on. Right, right. Like, she's got two yeah. kids. She she's, isn't going to put up with a bunch of bullshit. It's going to be like, no. hey, if I got to get a sitter for this, yeah, I, it's got to count. So Yeah, 100%. But she's also not cold-hearted because she does work for a charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be, like, a nice blend. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 again, I stand by my chunky but funky, but I, just, I, get I, can't, I get it. I can't guarantee how interesting the date itself is going to be no no it like it could go badly be interesting right yeah yeah absolutely i i agree with all of that yeah um and then yeah diet diet coke nick cage um <laughs> i think is last because of all of the reasons <laughs> huh I, diet coke nick cage got me that's very funny <laughs> um yeah like just feel the things like he just looks like an absolute fucking tool and there is nothing <laughs> <laughs> there is just nothing in his profile that suggests otherwise yeah 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 you're um, absolutely right the, this is it's a bad profile it's there's some attempts at humor that go nowhere it's rough yeah i mean the best thing that you're going to get from this is a great margarita but that's only by his say so so you know taste is um subjective it might be fucking awful also i'm not actually you know what I don't even like margaritas, so fuck you, Matthew. Also, much like dating a ghost, you are definitely going Dutch. Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah. Or he's fucking freelance, so you probably have to pay for it. Uh -huh. He'd probably be that type of guy who'd just be like, at the end, be like, ah, oh, yeah, so uh, you got this right. Right, right, right. Like, do you want to split this? You know, yeah. Uh, I'll get the next one, and then, like, you don't hear from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Is, he is not he is not good for picking up a tab no no i would really be interested to see what kind of person swipes right on that guy <laughs> I, yeah i wonder how this works for him because yeah. it doesn't it like it, it's like there's one thing to be self-deprecating but to be self-deprecating you also have to like you have to undercut the self-deprecating with something that's good about yourself right if you're doing a profile yeah. like this mm -hmm. so that if it's like um you know, like the whole hardwire to make terrible puns and great margaritas, basically. It's like, yeah. well, that's that's the downside. Give me some upside. Cause Yeah, like all he's done is down himself. Right. It's it's poor, not charismatic, unemployed. Terrible jokes. Right. Bad jokes. The only thing you got going for you is the great margaritas, but we gotta pay for that. Yeah. You know. And also as well, like this use of basically at the end of that sentence is like it just reinforces that there, this is the best that you're going to get from him. <laughs> right. This is, this is his true essence. Like you got to come up with something <laughs> like if you're a punk, you got to spin that in your favor of like, you know, music lover, always up for a night out, out on the town, something like that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like terrible jokes, but you will definitely laugh. Right. Right. Like, you know, bad puns, uh, you know, but I keep at it until you're laughing at them. Something like that. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like humor is the food of the soul. Oh no, that would be put me right off something. That's well, but funny. you know, but it's but something. it's better than this. It's yeah, better it's, than this, though, isn't it? It's something right now. Like the, you know, we need to go to profile camp with this guy and like, be like, you, yeah. we got to start all over. 
just scratch this whole thing. Yeah, this is this is all wrong. The only thing that you've done right is your name and age. Everything else is just a nightmare <laughs> on here. <laughs> so yeah, and you can't apparently you can't um, change the name and age. So at least he has done that right. The amount of profiles that I'll see where it's like I'm not 24, but fucking it won't let me change my age. Or like this guy who I've been messaging, his name is Stephen, but he it it like i don't know it, it was basically like a, um like an either an autotype or like he just hadn't written it and he didn't realize and it's just st oh ST. no and I, I had to ask him like and it was that horrible social anxiety of like if that is your name i've just offended you but also i'm not going to call you st if it's not you know like <laughs> and i had to ask him like dude is st your actual name <laughs> yeah do you come from a long line of stuff <laughs> Are you like the like you know the third? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You uh, know, is there like a dynasty where this is what you, you know in exchange for the millions? This is what you have to put up with in your life. Like, I <laughs> luckily, it wasn't his name, and I got to forego the social awkwardness and embarrassment of essentially saying that his name is shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like yeah. So at least Matthew's got this down better than stuff. Um. <laughs> yeah but otherwise yeah we need to scratch this completely because that is a hard fucking pass yeah i would uh i don't i mean even the the picture like take a picture on a sunny day man like i'm basically thinking that even the picture is grayed out it's yeah. like he's put like a, a gray out filter on it and he looks so morose and just like self-pitying yeah and he's got shitty pigeons in the background i know it's I I just like he, I don't. It, this is a oh. picture that the the soundtrack would be girlfriend in a coma. <laughs> yeah, or like anything by Radiohead, but not the good stuff. Right, right, wow. like the later albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, just very dreary. Uh, dreary. That is how this is. If you could encapsulate this photo in one word, dreary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh lifeless yeah oh poor diet coke nick cage you, you gotta man and it's a selfie so he could have literally taken this photo anywhere if this is the best that you're giving out like this is the best representation of me bro yeah it's it, right it, it is bad it, it, like all of it is just dreary and gloomy and off-putting and it's such a fun sucker yeah. So, l ladies and gentlemen of the listening audience, if you are yeah. putting together a profile, you can send it to us. We will. And we will help you out. Right. We could at least I'm tell that you. For a friend, actually, a friend of mine's having like a bit of hard luck, like getting matches on Tinder. So I'm meeting up with him on Wednesday, and I'm going to help him out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, let me know. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what I'm doing, give me a, give me a ring. Um, right. And uh, just be like, hey, we we need to bring in the, you know the guy who absolutely does not do any of this and yeah. just pretends Dude, to be an expert. Did we just start a business? Did we just start a little, a little business? I'll, look, I think we would be great at it, quite frankly. We would be so good at it. Yeah. I, I think between the two of us, we would, like, I don't think we could guarantee to get people laid. I don't, I don't think, you know, we can make that You can claim. only take a horse to water. Yeah, right. You know. We, but, but we will provide the lake. We will get you more swipes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get your foot in the door once you do at that point you're yeah you're, it's up to you. you're on your own we can't navigate that but right. like but we can surely give you a, a leg up we can get you the initial contact but if you're like mm -hmm. if you start off like well you know i'm a formal cocktail manager that makes bad puns yeah you know, like hey man and there is as well there's a caveat in the terms and conditions of like you know we only we can only work with so much, you know, if you're not giving as much to work with, we, you know, we can't perform miracles, but we will do our darndest. But, but even with Diet Coke, Nick Cage, we, we change the picture. We get him a, a, a better picture where he looks like he, he might be a little more fun and, and we <laughs> clean up that smiling. profile so that, you know, you can, you can have a little self-deprecation, but you gotta remember you're selling yourself here. Yeah. Yeah. Self-deprecation is fine. Yeah. But make it funny. Right, right. Like, you know, um, you know, if you're punk, like... Make it, that person feel good, not sorry for you. Right. I exactly. Like, I listen to my music a little too loud, so if I say what when you call my name, that's why, you know? 
Yeah. You know, yeah. Something like yeah, that's not great, but it's it's better than I got no job and no prospects <laughs> and all I want to do is talk about politics and environmentalism. Ugh. I'm just a terrible person. Just a terrible, terrible person. Please avoid me because I'm happier alone. Right, right. Is it, what this profile screams at me. Yeah, that is the, that is the porcupine defense of of <laughs> Tinder profiles. <laughs> just I'm gonna like yeah, shut you down before I even begin. You know, like you know, it's the it, kind of profile that swipes itself left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just shrugs off your phone. I know I'm not very fun. <laughs> He's Eeyore, but without the lovability. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Mr. Snuffleupagus of, hey, bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but he, but he has the kind of, I don't know, he also just sort of seems a bit more poncy than that though in some way as well yeah I, like, like, as you say, like he'd be on he'd be on the soapbox right, yeah it, he's gonna give you a lecture about how how veganism can save the planet yeah at dinner and then ask you to pay for half of it that is what this profile <laughs> yeah. says yeah, yeah and that is not what you yeah, want your profile sure. to say again like i'll uh, look i'll go to bat for both three-headed magoo and chunky but funky because I think both of those profiles are at least interesting, and yeah. and poor Diet Coke Nick Cage just just not bringing anything to the table at all. It just makes you feel bad. Yeah, the only thing he's bringing to the table is like a, a request to pay for half of said table. Yeah, um, yeah, poor guy. Um, and, the um, and he won't even share. No, um, like he, <laughs> he's definitely going to get the appetizer he wants, and he's going to eat all of it. Because he hasn't had food that day. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then like when you uh, when you sort of say, "Oh, hey, do you want to uh, share a Sunday?" and he'd be like, "No," and then he'll just eat the whole thing, mm -hmm. and then he'd be like, "Oh, you got this, right?" <sighs> yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, right. yeah, I got this, and I got you, bro. Yeah. See you later, yeah. Diet Coke Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I'll put that up on the thing so everyone can judge and scrutinize this poor guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's part of me that feels bad for him, but I'll, also I'll, I'll get rid of like I'll get rid of like the specifics on his profile, like in terms of where he apparently works, where he lives, all that kind of shit. <clears throat> because I'm not a, a truly horrific person. I mean, I'm somewhat horrific. These last ten minutes have probably proven that, if nothing else. But I don't want. I don't, yeah, I feel bad if I put all the fine and finer details. So I'll just. I'll just put like the photo of him and like his his bio bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, poor guy. Um, poor guy. I hope he finds happiness. I really do. Well, sure, sure, but not like this, man. You gotta. Yeah, and not at the expense of others either. Like, I hope he finds happiness with someone else to make happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Find find <laughs> the the Susie Sue to your Morrissey. Although Susie, <laughs> although Susie Sue's way too cool. Anyway, it's uh poor guy. Um, anyway, but ladies and gentlemen, if you are in need of profile help, by all means, <laughs> let us know. Also, I want to reiterate this before we get out of here: that if you have any tales of ghosts in romantic relationships with non-ghosts, I, I want more of it. Or have been ghosted in any sort of particular ways that you think right. would be interesting. Right. Or if anyone else as well, like, because um, obviously we were talking about a lot of serious shit. If anyone also as well does have any stuff that they want to share about bad dating experiences of like that we have been discussing, maybe not to the point where, you know, your family's going to kidnap, the family's going to kidnap you and, you know, put someone else in your brain. But, um, but like, you know, if anyone wants to like reach out about any of that, I'm for the record. I am fine. Don't worry. I am good. I am having a lot of fun, um, and all good. Um, but if anyone you know did want to reach out at all, or, or or you know convey anything, or want us to read out any experiences, we can keep it all anonymous. All good. Anyone wants to, more than welcome. Yeah, 
Just hit us up a DM. Sure. Like, uh, you can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade where you can find mm -hmm. my contact information as well as the, the Discord server. So feel free to shoot me a message on Discord as well. So, uh, yeah, you can also uh, put me a DM on Facebook or if you follow me on Instagram, you can put me a DM on Instagram. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like, like as you were saying, Kate, uh, if, if somebody has a story and you don't want to be named, then yeah. just just say like hey don't use my name but here's a funny story or an interesting story yeah yeah it doesn't have to be serious stuff it can be yeah. funny stuff too just might, if it's at your expense or it involves people that you don't want to kind of you know you don't want to be like oh that was me yeah then um, for sure you can totally totally uh, keep it anonymous well kate between now and the next time we talk where can people mm. uh find more out of you and hear more about ghost dates and <laughs> Diet Coke Dick Cages and so uh, Well, I mean, this is that's just the goodies that I, I reserve for this show specifically. But I do have another show. It's on been on a bit of high this lately. My co-host has been going through some personal stuff. Um, but we hope to be back very soon recording this month. Um, so that'll be exciting. And that is the eternal darkness of not so spotless minds. And you can find that anywhere you sort of normally listen to. Um, and you can also check out our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash edonism pod. Um, and the edonism is just the acronym. Um, or you can follow us on Instagram at edonism underscore podcast. Um, and yeah, but you, yeah, feel free to listen to our stuff. We've got um, a bunch of shows that you can catch up on. And uh, as I say, we will be back kicking ass and taking names later on this month. Excellent. And uh, yeah. and obviously, if you're listening to this, then you're, you know, subscribe to the Dark Parade and continue to do so. And as I said, drop, uh, drop by the the discord or or the facebook group and uh and say howdy as you're listening to this uh on the legionpodcast.com uh front page is um a link to the uh, uh the the top 10 horror movies of 2022 that i put together um, nice yeah so um spoilers there were a lot of good horror movies last year um yeah yeah, I was kind of saying, like, I, every year I start the list and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have 10 this year. And then I put the list together. I'm like, oh, okay, I've got to, like, get rid of 10 movies to get to a top 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, I think that's going to be the next episode that we do on our show is going to be our top sort of 10s. We have a couple because I was an exclusive horror. It's like we also cover, like, just general kind of dark movies under that sort of umbrella, that genre umbrella. So we'll have, like a top 10 horror and then we'll also have like top dark movies and then we'll have like our top five worst and mm -hmm. as well so like there's a few things going on there but um i think that's going to be our our next episode and we're both pretty psyched for it because yeah as you say there's been some really fucking good movies this year yeah. or last year yeah, yeah, as yeah. We can now say. right right it is technically last year so uh um, yep. As always, thank you to my co-host Kate. Without whom, none of this would not only be possible; it just wouldn't be any any damn fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've we've got a whole a whole year's worth of these to to do. Uh, I don't know what the next episode is going to be yet. Usually, it kind of you know comes to us in a dream. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I'm excited because uh, there is you know a whole world out there. I like the I I, I I was curious about the sociopath conversation, and the the deeper we got into it, the more I was like, oh my god, this is good. This is the. <laughs> Um, yeah this is the other side to my dating life like it's not all like you know embarrassing situations and uh and and serial um dating and i don't know if i can't fucking remember what else i fucking talked about um but like yeah there's also sometimes i will also have some pretty fucking stressful shit go down my friends literally um there's this joke that one day i'm gonna write my dating memoirs um under a pseudonym and it's going to be like a bestseller and i'm just going to get to flit off into the sunset with my my riches and just abscond somewhere mm. and live like a little quiet life because no one will know it's me the, <laughs> you call it like the story of k yeah oh, that's cool isn't it right yeah yeah all right <laughs> well again just the, the good ideas don't stop so um all right well folks uh until next month uh, that is it for me. So we'll we'll see you next time. Yeah, man. See you later. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, can't wait till next time. Bye. Bye.